Dishonored and I have a bit of a history. It's not a particularly long nor complicated one, but much like the game itself, I feel warmly toward it all the same. See, I've played games since I was but a wee child, but prior to making videos, challenge runs really weren't my thing. Love to watch them, but to do them? Nah. Or that would be the case, all but for two notable exceptions. The first of which being the first run I ever completed. My first playthrough was full of blood, violence, and my second was unseen. It was unheard. Not a drop was spilled and I hadn't an ability-based upgrade to my name. There was but one blemish on that run that I'd lived with for years now. And that is that I beat it on the easiest difficulty. So when faced with the prospect of giving Dishonored some more of my time, what better way than to fix that? I'd even go further. Gear upgrades, generally using blank, a full list if you will, all available in the description. I was going to make my whole life a hell of a lot harder because I was going to play this game the way I should have all those years ago. I would return to the city of Dunwall in midst of a rat plague that's actively killing countless civilians. And me as the Lord Protector, and definitely not secret romantic partner of the Empress slash father to Emily. Definitely not those things. I favored being a good father and playing hide and seek with my child despite her being terrible at it. She literally saw me go up to my spot and still couldn't find me. I'm raising a fool. At least she's a good kid, even if she does have my perception. I met with definitely not the antagonist and my not wife, who will of course go on to live a long and healthy life after the events of today. After finding that the guards left, I did a phenomenal job of protecting all three of us, paying no attention to my health, my not wife passing, or my... Who else was here again? Eh, if I forgot, it can't be that important. Or a guard is teleporting into existence to blame me for her death before then having me tortured for several months to confess to my crimes that I didn't commit, thus bringing dishonor upon myself in the same way that Zuko did. Kid didn't do anything wrong, but his home ain't going to agree. Some friends that I haven't met give me a key to my cell, which I will of course use to return it to the proper hands. It would be irresponsible to use for something nefarious, like breaking out of prison. Of course, me being the pinnacle of stealth that I'm not, I would immediately be seen before reloading and taking a man to his cell. Because it's his cell now. Remembering that bodies being located means having to restart the mission, and there would be at least a handful of them piled in here. Because more guards being awake is bad for me. What's also bad for me is... Well, let me show you. Yeah, see, this is this is not the speed I should be moving, I don't think. Because if I go straight forward, I go faster. So I, I guess part of the challenge is with a controller that only kind of works. Yeah, it doesn't read correctly. It only sends to do this on older games, but you may notice me just moving significantly slower and then normal speed. Rapidly changing between the two, and it's just my controller and the game not getting along nicely. I really need to replace this at some point, but controllers are expensive. Things were going relatively well. Got a bomb, had to sneak it past some guys in a courtyard. Said a thing I never should have said. So I'm absolutely going to jinx it by saying this, but honestly, so far, uh, very hard. Not very hard. Spent a bit getting past a reception looking place. I had far more trouble than I ever should have. It's basically a hallway with just a few guys and a window roaming around. But after knocking out people in here, I was able to open a massive metal door and load up a bomb to open a different metal door. I threw myself over a bridge as quietly as I could manage, disappeared into some sewers, ran face first into a trap, started working on a safe in one of the only two ways I know how until the chat was kind enough to help me out through the power of the internet. I knocked a man out, stole his dinner, and had to replay this portion far too many times. Escape is just around the bend, but I'm bad at this game and these guards are terrible at following instructions. Don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. I said don't look. I said don't look. You were given one job. Turns out the pipes above are pretty effective for getting by, which safely brought me to the end of the first mission. All to be greeted by this. I then spent entirely too long searching for how and when someone could have located an unconscious body. The end result? I have no idea. I had to restart. During which time I saved in an incredibly inopportune location where I got stuck in a loop of either being spotted or bodies being found. So I had to backtrack again, eat a man's dinner, and finally make my way to the boatman. Only took a couple hours. I already missed Blink, and I don't even have it yet. But no time to miss things, I made my way back to the Hound Pits pub, where we'd be organizing our whole overthrowing the new government thing. In the absence of better people, the royal douchebag has taken control of the city, so here we are. I met up with a guy who'll be crafting all the gear that I won't be using. Along the way, I got into a bit of a workplace accident. Dear God! Should probably be at least a touch more careful. So, the difference between uh, the last time and this time uh, is a little word that, you know, usually you don't want this to be thrown around in court. It's a word called, uh, premeditated. 
Afterwards, I met with a dude who hates being inside so much that he's known as the outsider. I get that different folks like different things, but I love plumbing, and I like that indoors please and thank you. And I'm not sure how much of this exactly can or can't be completed without Blink, but seeing as it's the Blink tutorial, I'm not too bothered by just kind of teleporting through it before moving on. He's my new Warlock patron, wants me to go collect runes for him, but that sounds like a lot of work for no payoff in this run, so nah. I then awoke to, uh, a lot of stuff. There is so much. None of which that I'd use, but it was nice of them to leave it here, I guess. And I'm of course told that I have to go kill a guy. I... I don't think they pulled the right person out of prison. I don't do that sort of thing. But something's got to be done, so off I go to figure it out. I started with a bold but decisive action in knocking a guy out before considering that I really didn't want to have to replay the entire mission for a bit. As funny as it could theoretically be for those that just come to see me suffer, I don't screw things up on purpose. For a number of reasons. Also, I was streaming this particular run, and I can handle the humiliation of failure, but I really don't want to ruin the next however long it takes for everyone else involved while I replay everything. Anyway, the place was relatively easy to sneak into. Over the wall and through the way, I was really pleasantly surprised to see just how viable lateral movement was even without Blink. I remember things being, maybe not so subtly, placed to fit just between Blinks, and it helped me to comfortably miss just how nice the paths that don't include it are. This included both highs and lows, literally, and some were a lot comfier than others. This one even included a non-hostile, normally an enemy. Odd. Our bond would be rather short-lived though, as I hadn't the time to process what was even going on, and he had a bit of a disagreement with the local guards. Up ahead was a great example in how a lot of encounters would go. I roll up with them having a conversation, and them seeing the whole area. And as long as I want to progress, I need that to change. I can wait out the conversation, and only then can I maybe move through. Every situation, a puzzle to be handled with careful timing and placement. Both things that I struggle with. Filling on loop gives a good time to reflect on things though. I accidentally managed to describe my entire channel and experience in the run all in the same sentence. You know that worked better than it should have, but it still didn't work good enough. There is some RNG here, and a group of rats managed to defeat two thirds of my issue, which made things go a lot more smoothly. Luckily, the next part of the little cow was only significantly more complicated. I started by knocking out the only guard in an area that's otherwise full of them, all to save a guy who wants to help my mission. See, I'm here to kill a guy who's working for a cult that's ironically very anti-cult. And since I can't kill him, I'm going to instead be using their own backwards rules against them. Or maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. First, I needed to consider how to even get inside. I figured a good start would be knocking out the outdoor guys. Not like the management cares about them, leaving them out with the rats. Then against all odds, I found that the best method was more or less just rushing through things. I was repeatedly and genuinely shocked by how effective just going is. Should I complain that this is working? They just let me walk in here! Inside, I'd be faced with multiple floors, tons of rooms, and accessing higher locations is... challenging. It doesn't help that altitude doesn't do much for you when folks are wandering around the same height. To try to combat that, I figured I could just go to the route of picking off just one guard. Knocking him out, mind you, but taking just one out of the picture to smooth things out. I would immediately roughen things back up via broken glass to save an innocent man. This was maybe an ill-advised series of events, but if I was going out of my way to not kill people, it felt wrong to let him die. Well, the gentlemen will be holding off on their business until I do some of mine, which involved a remarkably easy little grab for information. I then made the mistake of saving with them on their way to the secondary meeting the place of his assassination, and right before a guard would go on to spot the body that I placed earlier. Go figure, right next to a high traffic staircase, bad place to hide a person. After some various theories as to how I could remedy the issue, some even including just taking the person along with me, what better way to solve a problem than double down and make it twice as bad? Well, obviously tripling down and making it three times as bad. I managed to get my target, his target didn't seem to mind, and I was off to where I'd do him in. Socially speaking, not murderously speaking. It was basically just a matter of happening upon the key and backtracking through the place to the interrogation room. From there, there's an incredibly effective ledge that goes around most of the building. It's like it was made for me. Inside I would brand him, meaning all his loyal and generally indoctrinated fellows would refuse to converse with him, which is messed up in its own right. I learned that fence parkour is dangerous, but effective if you have the health to burn, which I don't. Far superior is the exterior ledge, in conjunction with Corvo's knees and ankles made of steel. This man takes falls like I take cookies, as often as they're available and with great enthusiasm. 
not ignoring his health, but more accurately acting as if purely to spite said health. Damn. I want cookies. The escape afterwards was more or less a formality. Not gonna claim it was effortless or clean, but it was mercifully quick. Get me out of here, Samuel. It's been a long day. Oh, son of a bitch! So, I went back to before I knocked a guy out, which meant replaying most of the mission, and I do mean most of it, this time avoiding knocking out as many people as I could avoid, and, uh, I'll let me speak for me. Yes! It's two down! Oh, God. This game is gonna be the death of me. So things were going great. After an in-game nap, I was of course right back to business, because Corvo is a machine. To start the day, I had to deal with some weepers, basically people that were suffering in every sense of the word, barely clinging to life while more or less just on their deathbed because... plague. They did give, though, a great example of one of my biggest problems with this game. Yeah, you thought you were getting away nitpick free. No, no. The AI in this game is genuinely weird. Sometimes you get spotted when you shouldn't be. Sometimes the AI will seemingly decide to turn around because eyes in the back of their head. Sometimes they'll just stand completely stationary indefinitely until you move along far enough, which can be a massive problem. One of these two are really easy to handle as long as they're nowhere near the entrance to that tunnel, because the second will come charging the moment it's incredibly inconvenient, because every enemy is a goddamn wizard and I'm not having it. I only really managed it by the AI just giving up, because one of us had to eventually, and it wasn't going to be me. But this was a recurring issue in a game that I otherwise genuinely love. Despite the stress that it puts me through, but that's purely a personal taste kind of deal. Anyways, I'm off to find... someone. I think. Right, my daughter. And also take out a couple of rich kids while I'm at it. The stealth along the way started kinda, but only sorta the same. There were some new things to worry about, some paths I couldn't take as comfortably, or at all. Bright side, I don't even have to pretend to attempt an assassination of the brothers I'm after. A dude here has offered to do it for me in exchange for finding out what happened to his man that went missing, and a safe code. Which seems like a genuinely really good deal. What's less good are the teleporting, auto-detecting bastards. I hate these guys. So much. Can't let that stop me though, or I'll never get anywhere. I instead took a rather direct approach, which led me up high. The interior of the doc's office wasn't too bad to contend with, and I was out of here before I knew it, finding that the man I was looking for is busy. He's far too preoccupied to return to work. Being dead and all. I mostly retraced my steps, despite some troubles. After, the best route I could find was going around and under very, very carefully avoiding a handful of weepers. Getting the rest of the way and into the building was easy. Inside, inside would prove delightful. See, there were multiple objectives, tight corridors, and as far as my brain can parse, it all looks the same. Don't get me wrong, great level design. I'm not denying that, but my brain don't do the navigate. And I had so much more trouble getting in and or out than was even slightly necessary. The key to the building wasn't too hard to get, the multi-floor issue was indeed an issue in the same way that the last job had its problems for me, but it also came with the same benefits. But we're also just gonna ignore this whole next objective. My work being done there, having gotten the information that I needed, I got really lost. Like, incredibly lost for such a simple building. Constantly getting detected or just dead ends before eventually finding my way out to sort of the front. Also not really, but sort of. Otherwise, it was another case of mostly retracing my steps, making ample use of high places, and very carefully avoiding detection to make it through. I managed to finally make it back to Slackjaw, so all in all, I was done here. Why is it directing me to the Golden Cat? Am I missing something? Right! Yeah, that's kind of important, actually. Huh. So definitely remembering to retrieve my own daughter, I made my way all the way back to the Golden Cat in a tactical fashion, as it was obviously the plan the whole time to... forget my child. Emily was rather effortlessly able to escape, and instead of retracing my steps, I tried sneaking out by a group that I stood no chance in sneaking by. Also not retracing what I should have, I instead took the front approach, which had already proven to be inconsistent, overall poor, and it did get me out safely, but why didn't I just go through the window near the top? I eventually got back to Sam and made my way back home. Oh yeah, and Emily was there too. I met up with people intent on telling me how great I am, and of course sending me straight back out to do more. I feel like a series of happenstances of this nature would probably attract a lot of attention, but what do I know? I'm just a really well-armed bystander. 
I arrived on the scene ready to go about kidnapping a man because for once, nobody is asking me to drop blood. Per usual, I took entirely too long to locate a door while overthinking the problem. The game provides you with some chains and whatnot to climb upon as a hint that you may want to shortly. So thank you game for the hint, as I also got to ride in a car for a short bit along the way. It wasn't long, but it was fun! I stopped to actually think about what I was doing, how to proceed, and slipped by with zero resistance. Up until bridge. It wasn't particularly hard to get into the bridge portion, and once I was, I began my ascent. And I don't know what part of my brain is so enamored with climbing, but I pretty regularly found myself climbing without any thought as to where or what it would get me. It's all for the sake of altitude. The love of the climb. The joy of the up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Complete control of the situation. Afterwards, things were going okay. And until they weren't. Wait. <laughs> okay, I know that's not the correct way to go, but it's the principle of the matter. What's even happening here? I will. Let me over. Over the fence. Corvo, go over the fence. Yes! <laughs> Screw you, door. I don't need you. On the other side of things, I spent a really long time overthinking and underthinking the problem at hand. I tried every way I could think to circumvent the issue, but eventually settled on just turning off the massive wheel that was impeding my progress. You would think that would be my first idea, but... The next area was full of some fun and phenomenal verticality. The maps aren't huge, but they're fun. In terms of level design, these are just great. And traversing it slowly on foot gives a great perspective to love it by. The majority of each feels so clean and deliberate in spite of it being built to look quite the contrary to that. I more or less just walked into the place. The security didn't really know how to handle the ancient technique of walking by them at a slightly different height. After, of course, I'd have to get them out. Right after freeing someone because they are right here and I'm not a monster. There was, of course, a very simple solution right in front of me for getting him down to the water to escape. Oops. Yeah, gonna need to go a bit slower than that. And as a side note, the load screen looks like this for this mission. So getting him killed, I just had this face staring back. As if into my soul, disgusted at my actions and failures. Okay, new plan. How are your joints not soup? To cut it really long story short, I struggled a lot with lugging him through a short series of guards and turned this little encounter into this little hiding spot. And despite my general policies on knocking out as few people as possible for the sake of ease, it worked out quite nicely. I didn't even have to restart this time. It was great. Luckily, he stayed out for the full duration of the trip, which would likely point to severe brain damage or death, but this is a game and logic be damned. Also damned be being tired because I finally got a nap. I had to get some information from the captive somehow, and threatening him didn't feel in the theme of things, so I bribed him instead, and he gave me everything I wanted to know. Or, more accurately, enough to go on. He did not tell me the secret ingredient to the Krabby Patty secret formula, nor how to properly bake cookies while also ignoring the instructions because I don't enjoy the precision required in baking. I do like eating them, though. Something about a lady I'm after being at a party dressed almost identically as two other women, making the three indistinguishable from one another. After, I'd be dropped off just short of a high society gathering, with the expectation that I'd take a swim first, so I'd be drenched. Could have just scooted a wee bit forward there, Sammy, my boy. This mission also brings in tall boys, so called because they're all named Jerry, of course. Getting by them and the other guards proved to be a bit of a struggle. They have a wide range of view, and there are enough guards covering the other parts of the street that finding a good time to slip past was a bit of a pain, but of course, doable. It was mostly just waiting for an opening to a rather obvious pass across the bridge. Straight into a party where I immediately happened upon an invitation because I'm just that good. It was in no way linked to luck that you can prove. It was, uh, it was all skill. All planned from the very beginning. Right after is a party full of highfalutin folks, leaving me feeling about as out of place as I possibly could. Luckily for the cost of retrieving a drink for a person and talking to a second person, I was given the identity of the person they came here to not kill. I then talked to her, convinced her to go downstairs, knocked her out, handed her off to quite possibly the creepiest person in this game. I'm not gonna think about some of the atrocities I've had to commit to not commit atrocities. Wait. After, I didn't even have to fully backtrack out, and backtracking is maybe the wrong word to even be using. Stealth sections are like puzzles. 
And as with many good unconventional puzzles, unsolving them is just as much a part of it as solving them in the first place. If you don't know what that means, then I suppose look into the world of puzzles, because there are some really cool ones, and demonstrating your understanding of them means putting them back to the way they were before you started. Getting out of a location is half of the problem here. Or not here, most places. This one you basically just leave. There's next to nobody even trying to look for someone on the way out, so another one down. Genuinely rather easy. Great concept for a mission, and I do love this mission, but very easy this go around. I'm sure I won't miss the master key that I could have gotten from the upstairs at all, and I didn't even know it was there, but I'm sure I won't miss potentially having it. After, of course, would be easy as well. I would simply need to break into the place of the most powerful man in the Empire, which I'm fairly sure would require a blink. I looked for another path. If there's one that I just didn't find, honestly, oh well. I don't need my record to be perfectly spotless to feel good about myself and my accomplishments. You shouldn't ever measure yourself against perfection, or you'll only live a life of disappointment. Most times I find that good enough is just that. Good enough. Strive for the best that you can do, but when you get there? When you know you get there and that you've given 100%, why waste time being upset when you can smile knowing that you gave it all you had? Sneaking through the lower areas was surprisingly easy, even with the tall boys patrolling. I can't say that I'm good at this. If you saw how many saves I went through, you'd likely be pretty well convinced of that yourself, but I got progressively more confident. It may have taken longer than it should, but I learned that confidence. I learned a more direct, deliberate approach to my movements. I have successfully been veiled in foliage, I don't know what that gets me. Even if I wasn't always sure of where I was going. Getting into the tower, I'd have to use that to my advantage. Looney Tunes don't fail me now. And they didn't. At least not immediately. I was genuinely shocked by how smoothly I could slink through large sections of this area. Which, for the record, I expected it to be difficult. And I was spotted often, so by comparison, my expectations seem not so bad. Through a series of miracles and pure luck, I managed to get through the first major hurdle. Despite the AI and some of its bugs. But in general, I was wandering through here kind of aimlessly. While that's normally true, this place is a bit more open. There are more places for things to go wrong, and what do I mean by that? Well, I went here. I made my way into here. I went backwards, forwards, and I scoured countless cracks and crevices in this massive crap heap. What's the problem, I hear you say? Well, the problem is that there are just a couple of keys that I need. One is locked behind its own door, and the other is somewhere. God knows where. And I searched. I went anywhere and everywhere that I could think to maybe hopefully find just a tiny piece of metal that stood between me and victory. I even made it into the Lord of Regents room to steal his stuff and whatnot, but the fact remained, I couldn't defeat him without a goddamned key. One path required blink through his room, one required a key. I didn't even know about the third one for a bit, so we're not talking about that right now. I searched for well over an hour for an answer to my woes when I came across... her. Who's she? Random civilian NPC. What's she doing? Standing. Just standing there. Menacingly. Over the course of the run, she wouldn't be the only one. There are multiple people that wouldn't move. It didn't matter how long I waited. It didn't really matter what I did. If I wanted her to leave, I had to kill someone, and she was staring straight at the door. And why am I telling you this? Well, because the key is right behind her. So I can't get it. It's not happening without breaking one of the other rules. After trying for a while, I was informed that there was another path that I soon stumbled onto. It contains a person walking in a small circuit and a dog that walks with them slightly out of sync because there's something on the floor that makes the dog walk slower. They turn at different times and also sometimes turn around at random. I'm still almost convinced that you could just Looney Tunes them because you kind of can. Except they behave differently. Slightly differently almost every time. The most consistent thing I could get going was that if you stay behind the dog, the human sees you. If you stay behind the human, the dog sees you. I couldn't stay out of line of sight of both of them with how fast he turns versus his hound, and it just does whatever it wants to to conveniently find you in spite of all logic and reason. I can't believe this random guard would resort to metagaming like this. It's downright unfair. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's look at that. Yes, you see that right there, that little, that little that lip right there. That's going to hurt your peripheral vision a lot because it's right next to your eye, which, by the way, you can't see because it's covered by something else, which I assume is another layer of a mask, which, by the way, hey, another layer of mask is going to make it more difficult to see. How can you see me, sir? I don't understand. 
Leave me alone. Frankly, if the game wasn't going to play fair, then I wasn't either. With what I'm pretty sure are multiple bugs working against me, I'm going to suspend my own rules just long enough to get through via a cup. Sneaky, sneaky. I'm going to bash your head in. If this continues. That might be worth checking out. Oh my lord, there's a glass. Go look at it. I played peekaboo with an arc pylon. Unfortunately, it's much better at the game than I am, but I did eventually get a man who could not be bothered to care that I was taking his machine to broadcast the crimes of my target. Who, by the way, is entirely responsible for the plague that's devastating the citizens here. His whole plan was to kill off the lower class, leaving only higher society people so they wouldn't have to deal with the riffraff. But then who the hell is going to work the factories? Who's going to clean and maintain the streets? Who's going to ship the goods that keep them wealthy? The dude is a parasite that doesn't realize that by killing its host, it'll die off too. There's no amount of bootstrap pulling, harder working, or whatever other rubbish justificationing you've got there, bud. You need the civilians a hell of a lot more than they will ever need you. Also, the rats got really out of control because animals have a history of not making for great weapons, and you're an idiot for trying to use a bioweapon in your own city. See ya, you overpaid self-important snobs. Corvo out! Firing. You know, that's on me. That's fine. Okay, for real this time. And with Sam still, you know... Waterbound. It was just a hop, skip, and a dive away from another perfect mission. I made it home to a lovely celebration where nobody betrayed me for stupid reasons, and god damn it, I've been betrayed again. Luckily, Sam has my back. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. I was captured by the man who killed my not wife, and uh, I think there was something else, but I don't remember. Ah, well, can't be that important. The outsider explains that the people I was working with got power hungry, saw me as a threat to their power, and wanted to kill me and manipulate. Sorry, what was that? Ah, eh, never mind, I should probably get out of this hellhole. It does require Blink to do so, despite my attempts to stack bricks. On the outside, I elected to not pick up a weapon, because, like, when would I use one? I slipped by a surprisingly small number of guards placed around me, and they were just kind of meandering around one of the two most dangerous people in the entire empire, but sure. While I was endeavoring to not use my gear, it's generally better to have and to not need than to need and not have. I figured it might be good to have as an emergency use kind of deal. But also, there was no way in hell I was making it past the local wildlife that I was finding, so I left without it, which kind of hurt as a person that plays games. Despite having fantastical powers, Dowd's men pretty frequently just don't look around much or in good directions, so slipping by them is a bit more intimidating, but I wouldn't necessarily call it more difficult. I found quite possibly the most effective person in his arsenal for spotting people. Bastard took way too long to turn around. Inside, I struggled a lot with finding an opening due to the second most effective person here. Something about him refusing to ever move away from the door caused a lot of issues, so I instead made my own opening. And just to be sure that those bodies wouldn't be found, I took care of a couple of loose ends. This whole complex is a lot smaller than I remember though, so getting through it felt fairly quick, though I know it really wasn't. That being said, this place is home to genuinely one of my favorite bits of storytelling through gameplay across all of gaming. Dowd has you captured. Poisoned, has taken your gear, surrounded by his men, who he trained, gifted powers of the outsider, and all in his base. These are on his terms. And how do you defeat him, in a non-lethal fashion? You take his coin purse. If you don't think about it, you robbed him. If you do, well, it doesn't matter. He can go wherever he wants. He can have whatever he wants. He can surround himself by whoever he wants. But there is nothing. Not a single solitary thing that he can do to protect himself from Corvo. He's alive because I let him be. And he may not know it now, but he will. When he realizes that his coin purse is missing, and he hadn't even the slightest inkling that I was just behind him, right within neck slitting range, and not one of his resources, not one of his senses gave him even the slightest idea that death was only inches away from him, and left. He will spend the rest of his life knowing that I could be anywhere, anytime, and change my mind. And his next breath is only drawn if I let it be. And that is the kind of message that you can't send through words. For that dishonored, again, seriously, one of my favorite moments in any game. It's incredible. Getting out and into the next fiasco was plenty easy. I spent a bit trying to figure out how to get onto a train rather unsuccessfully and instead used a nearby series of buildings to just kind of walk out of the place. After it was one of few places that genuinely rewards you for not killing people, but damn does it reward hard. 
A location that would be full of the ill and dying is instead full of folks just hiding out from the madness above, and really don't care if you slip through. Real nice, that. There was a barrier that I ended up shooting, though. In retrospect, I more than likely could have just slide kicked, but either way, it's some required aggression. I don't see it all that differently either way. Wildlife doesn't count as being detected, though, and you can get this little guy to shoot the next barrier open for you, which is really handy. Only cost me a little bit of blood and all of my belongings for another perfect mission. I entered a section of the game that literally only happens because I was betrayed. If everyone was just not a prick, we could have all gone on to tell stories and dance around campfires or whatever in-person friends do. I tend to mostly just play games online with mine, but that's not going to be invented for a while. I slipped into my old place to find that Emily wasn't there. I had a chat with one of the few loyal people left who also seemed to have a misunderstanding about how beds work. I spent entirely too long trying to get into this room so I could get a bit of information. I returned to a couple of guys who then proceeded to electrify every hostile enemy in the entire location, but not us. Somehow. We brought Sam back, who then brought me into the last mission of the game. A beach assault looking deal, followed by a hell of a climb. Thank god for elevators. I was fairly quickly able to slip under their defenses and locate a way in, but it would require blink. But I was pretty sure there was another answer to the problem. I happened upon a bit of a recurring bug that seems to happen when the architecture gets unhappy. I slipped right under a guard's nose into the place, and it's just that easy. Please pay no mind to how long it took for me to find that and to figure that out. I slipped easily into their drainage, right past one of their men, and just kind of climbed most of the rest of the way. You'd think the chains would generate a lot more noise with a fully grown man clambering up, but nah. Then rather than take the high road, I went low, and this, like many other encounters, would go slow over multiple attempts because I'm not good at this game. I'm really not good at a lot of things, and that's okay. I make it through via passion, through being a stubborn bastard. I'm not out trying to be the best, just good enough. And while it may be regarded as cheesy to do so, I genuinely love the save and quit function and how it lets even players like myself reach and strive for just that. Good enough. I rode the elevator up, let off some steam before reloading, and carried on to find another AI that seems to have simply broken. I'm not really sure how you are or aren't meant to avoid this kind of thing, but I tried just about everything I could think to fix it, and it seemed to always result in him simply returning and staring at the only way through that I'm aware of. Even using items and whatnot, I wasn't having a lot of luck. The only way I could work out to get him to move without then kind of immediately being spotted was to throw a bottle or, funny enough, fire a gun. I have no idea why it worked so well, but it did. This lodged him and his friends so I could knock them out to proceed, so you can take that as another failure, or we can just ignore it because the game likes breaking on me just a tad. After everything though, my new nemesis simply gave up and decided to give me the key that I needed for some reason. You bastard! To think he would lie to me after everything he'd done. Well now I... After he lied to me, now I really don't like him. So I instead probably did some permanent damage to the dumb bastard and... Oh yeah, my daughter! Who I definitely remember the whole time. Didn't, uh, didn't forget for even a moment. But with that done, I do believe the story comes to an end with a new empress. With Corvo going unheard, unseen, unviolent. I, I don't know, you hopefully read the description to now know my list of accomplishments in the run. Anyways, I'd like to thank my lovely channel members for your support, as well as the emotional support of everyone who came to watch me fail repeatedly through this fantastic little title. Your kindness is greatly appreciated, and your presence makes these both fun and incredibly rewarding. Regardless of who you are though, I hope you enjoyed your time here. You probably know how to use social media, and I hope that means it's good to hear your thoughts now and on a few tradings. Until then, remember to stay safe, spread some kindness in the world, and I hope that you have a wonderful Wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.